Hey everybody, it's the King of Koopas here, and we're back for something a bit different here. Rather than just doing work on this machine, let's actually go over the process in which I do the work. Today we're going to be taking apart and cleaning up this 0-9 through nine unit, otherwise known as the match unit. And we're also going to be upgrading it with the bell and clapper so that we can eventually attach a bell to this. So every time it steps, it makes noise. Because more bells are always fun. Alright, so before we begin, I have to get a couple things out of the way. If you don't want to listen to my ramblings, click this, or go to the time code listed below, and you can skip all that. Alright, so, steppers are very intimidating to a newbie. I admit, before working on this machine, I did not like, like steppers. I didn't like taking them apart. They were like scary boogeyman of the pinball world to me. However, as time is, after doing a couple of them, they're really not that bad. If you're going to take apart one of these units though, I still suggest taking a lot of pictures, specifically mainly of the back here with the gear and ratchet assembly. Now this is a continuous stepper, meaning that there's no step down or reset coil. It just steps in a circle indefinitely. So this is actually the simplest of all of the stepper units to work with. So this isn't going to be a complete tutorial for every stepper out there. But the steps that we're going to take in here will work on every stepper, at least from the Gottliebs of this era. There just might be a few additional steps with extra coils. And again, just make sure you take pictures and you watch how these ratchets all go together. And you should be fine. Alright, and so the second thing I should say, should you take apart a stepper unit? Looking at this one here, if we actually step it up. You can see it is advancing, and I bet you anything, if I were to just clean and lube up the outside wheel here, it would probably work like brand new. But, I, I do want to add the bell clapper anyway, so we might as well go ahead and do that. Alright, so without further ado, let's get this thing apart. Alright, so, when taking a stepper apart, first thing you need to do is, well, we have to get, uh, get this gear out, and in order to do that... We have to take the front off. Now, if this is a different kind of unit, you're going to want to, while I'm looking for the right screwdriver here, you're going to want to mark your position. There we go. Where's escaping me? So that you know where, where this goes back together. I'm not too worried with this one here, be, simply because it's a continuous stepper, so there's no zero position or anything like that. But just to be safe, if you'll give me a sec, I'm going to go ahead and mark the position on this anyway with my Sharpie. This is... A good practice to have and shut up 100 point bell it's a good practice to get into anyway so we'll just pick a position like maybe right here mark its position somewhere down here right. and you can also mark this if you want to but I'm not too concerned with that all right so let's get this thing apart Start, we have to do, undo the three screws that are actually holding this front disc out. Now, if you're not, if you don't need to take the whole stepper apart like what I'm going to be doing here, again, a lot of problems on these steppers can simply just be solved by taking this plate off, cleaning the rivets, and lubing them up. I've had so many steppers just come to life just from doing that. Alright, so, and again, remember, make sure to keep your parts isolated. This part just comes off, set this aside for cleaning later. And now you're, so now we have access to, to the front here. And you can just kind of see all the grime in. Some of these rivets are a little worn, but that's not of too much concern. All right, next step up is we have to get this unit right here off. Now again, you don't have to mark it. I usually, I'll explain how I get, get this back in the right position when we get there, but I'm gonna mark this just for, for example here right there and again just do this with sharpie don't do anything you you're going to be regretting later all right now to actually detach this main gear oh i one part i almost forgot actually this one doesn't have it never mind uh, i actually better say this um units that have two coils that step down are going to have a tension spring coming out here you're going to have to undo that spring before you go any further you don't want that thing flying out as you're trying to get the gear out. So in order to do that, there's, it's going to be hooked onto this 
loop right here. Just undo it and gently unwind it and count the winds. You want to make sure that when you rewind that tension spring, it has the same number of winds. It's not as hard as it sounds. All right, so now back to what I was saying. I can't get this thing up. In order to get this plate here off, we got to undo the set screws that are here. And there's one down here. So get your Allen wrench. I'm not sure what size this is. Or Allen key, whatever you want to call it. And see how hard this is. Oh wow, those came out with like no pressure whatsoever. That's the first. These things look usually so bound up, they will not move. And as you're going, just make sure that nothing is getting caught or anything. Make sure you don't lose these either. And once you take one, once you lose, take out one screw, you should already feel this thing starting to get loose. All right, now. This should just lift up. Might have to give it a bit of a bit of coaxing. Yeah, this one is a bit a bit binded up here. Okay, so when this happens, you have to be careful. Usually when it's sticking like this, the reason why I've noticed is because what the set screws have done is put is pushed on the metal shaft and some of that metal is actually raised. And that's what's causing this jam. So the only way to really get this out is to just kind of slowly but surely coax it out, spin it to try and clear out any metal that might be in the way. Uh, let me get this thing back up. And just slowly push up as you're doing so. Don't be too forceful. Now this unit doesn't have the step up or step down, so it's not near, nearly as uh, dangerous to do so, but you need to be careful when getting these things out. You don't want to accidentally break something. Yeah, I can feel it's coming out very slowly. Ah, there we go. And it's out. Put that aside. And you probably won't be able to see it on the video, but uh, but there's little markings right here, right here. I can feel it that are jetted out. I'm going to actually take a Dremel to this a little bit later so we can smooth that out to make reassembly a bit easier. All right, so with this out... You should be able to just get the gear out, assuming you undid the tent, the uh, tension spring on the other side. Move, move the ratchets out of the way with your fingers, like this, and it should, at least in theory, come out. But as you can see, once again, it is caught on those little, on those little um, e uh, extrusions on the shaft. So give me a second. I'm gonna grab my drone. All right, so I went ahead and I just put a sanding bit on my Dremel, and now pushing this forward, putting the Dremel on about medium. I don't want it to be too fast. I'm just going to see if I can smooth it out here. Careful not to grind when you're doing this, that you're not going to be, like, you know, grinding away. You don't want to take too much metal off. You just kind of want to get the metal that's blocking it done. So just do it very slowly. Work through any parts that may be getting out. Let's see what that did. Going a bit further. Still getting caught in about the same spot though. So I will cut the video until I can get this smoothed out and out. There we go. That didn't take that didn't take too long. Um, I don't know if you can let me see, I don't know where my camera is being pointed. I actually did take a bit more off than I wanted to, but this will still work. This is not garbage or anything. All right, so now that you have that out, go ahead and do yourself a favor and actually detach this disc here. Just, just do yourself a favor. And from the looks of the screws here, they actually look a little bit stripped right now. So this looks like I'm not the first person to do this, funnily enough. Actually makes sense considering this thing didn't have a belt have a bell or bell clapper attached to it. I'm not sure if it rolled off the factory like that or if an operator somewhere along the line took it out. Now it's still gonna be attached to the coil, but don't worry, you just wanted to get that loose. Alright, next up you have to get we're gonna get the actual coil detached. Now for whatever reason, they use um torque screws for these. So get your torque screwdriver. Again, I'm not sure what sizes you need just 
have a set on hand and just get them all nice and loose. Now, it's not like it on this stepper, but on one of the other steppers that I worked on, I noticed that the screws had a wire going to them, which I think acted as the ground. So, pay attention to when you're taking these out, see if there's any wires attached to these screws. So, when you put them back in, obviously. So, with this plate off, take this off. Well, you're ready to inspect the parts, see how they are. This is a bit rusty. I put this in the evapo rust, rust bath and get the coil out just like that and this just all can be moved to the side now for later use now this ring when i first did the stepper i could figure out where this ring came from it goes right there i don't know how important this is but it was part of the original design so we're gonna keep it that way now with that the main plunger here is just gonna come come right off and I can actually feel this plunger is mushroomed pretty bad so I'm gonna be having to see if I can smooth that out because I don't want to have to track down another plunger all right so now with that out detach the cotter pins and the whole unit just comes out here so now you have full service all right so now our next order of business I guess because everything here feels all right, but it's dirty, as you can see. And we're going to have to take this off anyway in order to attach the bell clapper. So, our next step is going to be to get the actual ratchet ratchets off. So, to do that, we're going to first detach these springs here. And again, I don't really have a good way of detaching springs. I just kind of play with them until they come out. I'm trying to remember to keep this in focus on the video, because I am recording a video here. I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest. I am garbage when it comes to removing springs. Okay, there's one. I always just bend them, and I don't like bending them. There we go. Yeah, see, I bent that a bit. I imagine it's just one of those things that comes with time. Also, needle nose pliers really help. There we go. All right, so all of the springs are out. So now we've got to actually get these ratchet assemblies off. Now, there's a very, very important step that you have to do because most people are going to be tempted to take the screwdriver, jam it in there, and start, you know, unscrewing it. Don't do that, whatever you do, because on the other side here, on both of these assemblies, you see there's nuts. If you try to undo either of these without first either loosening or just taking off these nuts, the shoulder bolt that these arms on are going to shear and they're going to be useless and you're going to have to replace them. It's one of the most biggest beginner's mistake when taking apart steppers, which thankfully I knew about before doing this. So I haven't sheared any shoulder bolts yet, but you're going to have to be careful and to be honest, even if you do take the nut off, there's still a chance it's going to shear anyway just from age. So now, you're going to want to get your nut driver and just kind of put it in there, break it free, and pray to God that it doesn't shear the shoulder bolt. Alright, this one this one is coming out. There's a, Don't be afraid if there's a lot of tension under it. There's going to be. There we go. Stupid. The nut is caught in my... It's not. Huh. Oh, there it is. How did that catch up? Alright, so now that the, now that that's out, now take your screwdriver, insert it into the shoulder bolt here, and turn it. I'm feeling resistance on here, so this is a bit scary, but it's not going to come out anyway if I don't use a bit, bit of force. There we, go. there we go. There we go. Shoulder bolt is out. Now, when I took 
the one of them out, and it's kind of like this way. The threads on the shoulder bolt were a bit sheared. Um, I was able to fix that with a Dremel, but just be careful when you do that. And these two shoulder bolts are different, so if you don't remember which one goes where, make sure to keep them separate. All right, but now that that's out, that is free. That's going to be going into the Evaporust bath. Even though it actually is, eh, it's not that dirty. I could probably just clean that up by hand, but I'll put it in the vapor rest anyway. Doesn't hurt. Makes it look nice and shiny. All right, now, same thing with this side. And it need a different sized nut driver. There we go. Ugh. Ugh, there we go. Again, take lots of pictures as you're doing this if you're not sure or confident in your memory. You can never have too many pictures. Take this out. And then same thing from the other side. Now there is an e-clip right here that you can... That I'm actually not sure why it's there to be 100% honest, but I've never had to undo it when working on these, so... Same thing, and then just unscrew screw the shoulder bolt. Nice and simple like that. Put that aside. Alright, so now we're just down to pretty much the bare metal here. Now, I would normally put this in a vapor rust, and I actually think I'm going to. Now, be warned that if you soak these, it's going to take this, this lettering off right here. This is an unfortunate thing when cleaning. I'm gonna, I'm not too worried. I'm gonna make uh, replacement ones up, but it does kind of suck that we're gonna lose a bit of the original stickers. So I'm not worried. You might, you might be. And just for the record, I'm gonna make sure this is an A4287, just so I know what to put down when I'm recreating this sticker. So I am going to go shove everything into the evaporust bath and I'll meet you back here when I've gotten these things sufficiently cleaned up. Okay, and we are back. It is now a day later. Everything's been in the evaporust bath as I actually did a pretty horrible job cleaning up, you can kind of see the parts here are um, a bit shinier. You can see the main piece here cleaned up really nice and the sticker actually survived all right. Not too bad. So this looks all nice and shiny. I've cleaned it, polished it, and it's time to get this back together. All right. So our first order of business are going to be to re- remount all the uh, various arms. Now I am actually going to quickly reclean this, but I have noticed that there appears to be, is that this rivet here appears to be damaged from just general use. I'm not sure if this is going to be a problem as we're remounting it. We'll find out as we go. All right, sorry about that. All right, so as I said, first thing, so hopefully assuming that this piece here doesn't cause problem because I don't have a replacement for this. Let's uh, find out. So this arm right here goes here, if I remember. However, this is also where our arm is going to go. So first things first, we've got to dig out the, our associate parts. And I haven't actually gotten around to cleaning this stuff yet, so we're kind of just making this up as we go here. So the pieces we need for that, I think we need that washer. I need that long shoulder bolt in here. That's the short one. Here we go. There's the long shoulder bolt, and I'm going to need that lock nut. I think that's everything we're going to need. Let me actually have a look at something here. Ah. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So first things first is we have to actually clean that shoulder bolt. I recommend for that good old 99% isopropyl alcohol. Kind of get it a good scrub. You don't really need to polish the shoulder bolt. I mean, it'll probably 
be fine. Um, you can re-lube this if you want. I'm not going to, and it's honestly, I don't think it's needed. Needed as you, I mean, the lube is what gummed up initially to begin with. All right, so now, so this is going to be our new bell, our new bell and clapper. So what this essentially does is this goes on to here. And then if I remember correctly, feeds through the bottom or something like this. Okay, derpy derp, I had it in backwards. It goes in something like, like this. I don't know, we're going to have to play with this. But either way, let's get everything threaded through here first. So actually, make sure I have this in view. So let's get our shoulder bolt. Feed it through everything here. That, why is that not? There we go. That's fed through. Now we're going to line this up with the hole here. I think it's lined up. Ah, come on. It's going to take a bit of fiddling. To, there we go. To get in even. Kind of just started with my finger here. And we haven't attached the spring yet. Don't worry, I am aware. And this is not. There we go. Just trying to get kind of get it finger tight for now. There we go. No, where'd I put my screwdriver? Start by getting that nice and tight. Now you might have to play with this and make sure that everything is moving is moving freely. It appears that everything is moving freely. I feel like that should have more actuation, but I won't worry about it for now. All right, so on the other side here, attach that nut. And I'm pretty sure this attach. I gotta make sure that everything goes on right. There we go. Just what what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a screwdriver on the other side. And then I'm putting trying to put pressure on it at least. It's a bit difficult with this new bell clapper on. But whatever. And I'm just trying to get this turned and tight. It's difficult, but you can do it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Get it somewhat tight. Not super tight. And as you're going, just make sure that, that as you're tightening this up, that nothing has bound up yet. Yep, that looks good. That feels good. We're just going to make sure that this is nice and tight. And yeah, there we go. This is all moving freely. And now while I have a chance, I really should attach that spring. So we're going to grab our new spring here and I'm not really sure how this attaches, but we'll just kind of figure it out. There we go. So that's one side in. Now we got to get the other side in. I don't know if you have to actually create small bends on this or if there's an easier way to get these in but I don't really know a good way to get these in there we go all right now we got a what I should have done is gotten this lower hook and in fact I might just have to take this yeah, I'll just take this off here in the meantime while I reattach this there we go if now that, it's just going to be pulling on that, giving us a little bit of spring tension. Now that the spring is on, it doesn't seem to be moving nearly as much, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and rebend this spring. Get this one back into position. There we go. Again, that shouldn't come out. That should be fine. Like that. I believe that's right. All right, so next up, we gotta get the the 
the next ratchet in. All right, so same deal. We got to get this in. If I remember correctly, this goes on. No, not like that. There we go, like this. There we go. I had to think about that for a sec. I'm just going to put that, put that there for a sec. And we're going to grab the necessary parts. So for that, so for this one right here, make sure you're going to need the smaller shoulder bolt, a lock nut, like that, and a small, a small washer, which apparently I don't, there it is, I was right there. All right, so now before you put this shoulder bolt back on, I remember there's a specific way that this has to go. Yeah, make sure that this piece right here is behind this piece, I believe. If you don't do that, you're gonna have to take this whole thing apart to fix that. All right, and just like last time, we're just gonna kind of start it with our finger here. Into the main slot here. And get the shoulder bolt started. Again, make sure that when you're doing this, that this piece sits behind this like this so that the actual ratchet assembly can work properly. All right, I'll just reattach that spring there. Try and see if I can re-bend that back because I did bend this a bit. All right, so same thing as we're going to do before. Now that we got this shoulder bolt screwed in, I think all the way, let's uh, double check to make sure that we have that in. Careful, if you over tighten the shoulder bolt, it will just bind up the whole the whole unit. Same thing that we're gonna do before. Ah, put that down. Put a screwdriver in the other end of the shoulder bolt here. And we're gonna tighten her up. Come on, get in there. Again, this is kind of just an art form, I think. Can't tell if this magnetic screwdriver is helping or making things worse. And I think I got the wrong size nut driver. There we go. Having the right size nut driver definitely helps. There we go. A little bit wobbly, but I think that should be all right. No, nah, that's not fine. Again, you just gotta kind of play with this. Find the right. Find the right leverage because that shoulder bolt has to be in far enough so that this, so that the arm isn't moving a lot. But not too tight that it binds up. Kind of got to just play with it. A little bit too tight. There we go, that's like perfect. One. There we go. So now assuming we did all this right, we should be able to just rehook this spring up. But again, I guess it helps if I have it on camera. There we go, I think we have this set up properly. All right, so check and see if we do. Let's actually just go ahead and put the gear in and see if we set everything up here. Because in theory, if we move everything out of the way, this should, and we push everything out of the way here, this should advance like this. All right, so that was a complete disaster. I apologize for that. I had to actually think about how all the springs went together. So we're gonna do a quick recap here since that was so bad. So reattach this one, re 
So reattach this arm here first. Thread, if you if she has the bell clapper, make sure this goes on first. Then the actual ratchet. Screw on, tighten from the other side like this. The springs go, the springs go here and here. And then from here to up here, reattach this one in much of the same way. Spring goes from here to here. And then make sure that this little arm right here is behind this little part that extrudes here because that's the actual blocker. Because if you did that right, nice and simple. All right, so we're actually going to just get this apart here for a second, take the gear back out because I haven't actually cleaned the gear yet. I just wanted to make sure that I did do that right. All right, so putting that aside, I'm going to go ahead and take clean my gear out. Same, much the same way. A little bit of 99% icy profile. It's actually not too dirty. So now there, you can lube this if you really want to. Um, I don't really feel like that it's necessary to re-lube this gear. I, you can, because, you know, I mean, this lube is what initially binded up to it anyway. I'm not going to. You can, again, if you're going to use any lube, make sure to use your um, synthetic lube because that's the only thing that I recommend using on these things. Okay, so now that we're done that little train wreck, let's get my thing of little parts here, because we're, so now we're gonna reinsert, we are gonna reinsert the gear and we're gonna get this reattached. So the same thing, just put the gear in, kind of move all the steppers out of the way, and everything should just kind of pop in like that. All right, so now, so now from the other side, we need to, before we actually reattach that, we have to reattach this plate and the coil. So, put this aside. As you can see from the video here, the rivets are pretty dirty and worn, and there's some weird right splooge. Like I'm not really sure what it is. But uh, either way, it's nothing that this can't that our scotch bright can't solve. So same as I'm actually going to use a bit of isopropyl on my scotch bright I was just using earlier. And we're just going to give these a quick wipe down. Oh yeah, look at that. It just takes the gunk right off and shines it up. You can also use sandpaper if you want. Sandpaper I've used in the past with really good success. There we go. Careful not to actually take, sand them down, like make sure you're not wearing them too much. If you're using sandpaper, make sure you're not being too harsh on these or else you can really screw them up. There we go. I'm going to actually just wipe this down because I believe there's a little bit of super clean mixed in with that alcohol. So we're just going to wipe it all down. Look at that. There we go. Nice. We got some nice clean rivets now. As you should know, now this is where I am going to recommend using super lube. We're going to take a bit here, just put a bit on your finger like this, and kind of just put it around here. I guess I should probably say, if you're not familiar with this stuff, this is called this is super lube by uh, Teflon. It's a multi multi purpose synthetic grease. This stuff is amazing. It's synthetic, so it doesn't dry out over time. It's a good, just a good all-around lubricant. It doesn't block the flow of electricity, so you can put it over the rivets like this and not have to worry about it getting in the way of connections. And, yeah, when you're dealing with pinball, this is the stuff to use. So just kind of get some on the rivets. And that'll help it so that when this disc right here is gliding over, it'll just glide a bit more easily. All right, while we're at this, we need to go ahead, get this old dirty coil sleeve out because that is garbage. And if I can find where I put it in this bloody mess of mine, we're gonna shove a fresh one in. There we go. There we go, fresh coil sleeve. All right, now let's go ahead and get everything reassembled. So we're going to go ahead and get the coil reattached. Oh, I almost forgot. 
this O, this O ring. Again, I don't know what this is for, or even if it's supposed to be bent like that, but again, original design, so we're just gonna roll with it. So now before you actually put that in, you should probably get make sure this is reattached. So this doesn't actually the plunger doesn't actually like attach, it just kinda sits in there like this. So you, it's kind of a little bit of an art. You gotta get everything lined up here. Come on. Yeah, as I said, it's a, it's a bit of an art form. And I'm gonna straighten this out. I'm pretty sure that this is not supposed to be bent like this. So let's just actually straighten. No, there is a bend to it. All right, whatever. Again, this design I really don't get. By the by the way, I guess I didn't actually notice the plunger. I went ahead and smoothed it out with my Dremel, so the head's a little bit more even. I've also polished it. As you can see, it has a bit more of a shine to it. See through. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna leave that there for now. So let's go ahead and get the coil stop bracket reattached. I'm trying to get everything lined up. There we go. There we go. Trying to get these lined up is a royal pain. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta play with it until it actually catches here. Once it catches, you should be okay. Tighten it all up. And this isn't the right size lock nut, so I must must have used the wrong lock nut in the wrong area. Oh well. Seriously, yeah, so you guys are getting the abridged version. I'm actually having a lot of trouble getting all this stuff back together right now. For whatever reason, I think I'm just really tired right now. Alright, there we go. Make sure everything's nice and hunky-dory and tight. There we go. Now, assuming you did everything right. Yep, all looks good. I'm noticing that this, that this, that the plunger isn't quite as lined up as I'd like it to be. And I'm not sure why that is, but it does, it is going in. I think it's just, I mean, once it's sitting like this, it'll be fine, but even still. There we go. All right, so now that you very much painfully got that back in, let's get this front panel back on. Again, make sure you're using the right screws when doing this. I actually did not mark which screws it was, so I imagine, yeah, it's these two shorter screws. Again, I do a lot of just guesswork when I'm doing this. I just kind of say, oh, okay, well, I have three long ones, so that must be for the front plate. Oh, I have three short ones. That must be for that. That's honestly not a good attitude to be going in with, into this with. Just the, oh, it goes back together. It'll probably be fine attitude. There we go. All right, front plate is back on. We're getting there. All right, now we got to make sure that make sure that this is make sure that this is forward as far as it can go. Cause now we got to get this plate. Yeah, I'm actually gonna clean this quickly. And this is this one doesn't look too bad. I'm actually and I'll get a couple. I get actually it's not needed. I'm gonna get some Q-tips clean this up. All right, so now I was mentioning earlier that if you didn't mark mark on your um, uh, display where this actually goes, there is a way you can figure out how to line this up properly. As you'll notice, 
might not be able to see it on the video, you might be able to, is that the set screws have left marks on the, um, on the actual shaft of the gear. So what you can do is find the two points on the uh, unit. I'm actually going to cycle this around here so it's an easier location. You can line up the holes on the shaft, on this um, insert or shaft, whatever you want to call this, with the set screw marks. So this just goes in like that, and it's about right there, I believe. So now, you're going to have to get the set screws. Now, getting the set screws started without losing that position can be a royal pain. Just kind of try to... See, I've already lost it. What I'll do is kind of just get them started. As I was saying, what I'll kind of do is just get the screws started like that. And then get them on the shaft. So, you've got to be careful. If you do them too much, they're not going to go on the shaft. Period. There we go. About right there. Hold it in place. And start tightening. To the best of your ability. You do have some leeway with this. It doesn't have to be 100%. As I'll show later. Once you get one in, the rest become easier. Yeah, that hole's actually a bit stripped. That's why that one was so loose. Oh, well, do the best we can, given the circumstances. If it hasn't come apart in 40 years, it shouldn't come apart now. Ugh. Again, just make sure that these are really tight. You don't want these moving once you got them nice and tight. There we go. All right, so now make sure that everything is still ratcheting nice and freely. Feels nice and free. Perfect. All right, so... Next up, we have to re actually, last step is to actually reinstall the wiper disc here. And I haven't cleaned this yet, so guess what? We're breaking out again. Okay, there we go. I think I got most of it out. All right, so now if you weren't stupid and washed away your mark, you wouldn't have any issue putting this back on. So now we got to actually reattach this. So that means we're going to have to. Find a rivet and some. make sure that all these rivets are lined up properly. So I'm not really sure how these rivets are supposed to line up here with the number match. I imagine it's just something like this. Again, this doesn't have a zero position, so I don't think it really matters too much how this goes but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and line it up with these two rivets right up here yeah because these two rivets here are obviously meant to make a connection make a connection here so I'm gonna line them up with these two here again I'm pretty sure this is all the same so get get, get these holes lined up and just get the screws kind of just finger tight so that we can play around with them and get them all lined up. All right, so now, assuming that we did everything right, we should have everything just kind of line up. I think I got it lined up. Again, I'm just lining up where ri the rivets are with the fingers on the wiper because this, look, if I got this right, all the fingers should, could, should jump to a new position every time. 
And I think I got this right. I think. I think it's got to be moved a bit more. Yep, it's got to be moved a bit more forward here. Like that. There we go. That's like perfect right there. Seriously, this is why you mark your position. It just makes life easier. All right, so now I'm, I'm just going to double check here. Again, you might not be able to... I got something stuck there. I'll deal with that later. You might not be able to see in the video, but I got these two shoes lined up there. These shoes down here are lined up with rivets, and I can see over on the other side here they're lined up. So now the moment of truth, if we did everything right... Look at that. Nice, fluid action. Every time I, I hit this trigger, it's advancing. No resistance whatsoever. Nice and fluid, which is exactly the way we want it. So now, I'm, I am looking at the rivets, and some of them still look kind of, kind of, off. I'm not really sure how to explain it. As far as I can tell, these rivets are right. That's why I cut the video just to make sure everything was right. So, now this would be the end. However, what about our actual bell here? Well, I did get some, some hardware to mount it. So if, so if you'll give me a second, I've got some washers here. And I also bought a box of screws here. I just want to make sure that this is indeed the size that I need. These are, I believe, 1024s. Oh, yeah, those will work perfectly. So I don't know if there's, like, any real, like, good way to go about mounting these. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to put a washer through here like this. And then I got this rubber spacer here. This goes over here. This goes over the lock nut, which will then spill parts everywhere. This will go over here like this and this I'll just kind of tighten this all down like that and I'll probably do it from the opposite side here like that there we go there we go that makes more sense put this part up here and then put the, the lock washer down there and then screw it from down there. That seems like a logical way to do it. So now the only, the million dollar question is, where does this screw in? I'm not 100% sure. Let's find out together. All right, so uh, logically speaking, I think it's actually just right there. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a hole mounted right there for it. So let's try right there and see what happens. Okay, wow, well, I had that completely wrong. It goes into this little track right there that's where it goes okay i'm stupid we know this it's all good and i think i actually lost no i didn't all right so that goes in about right there and same thing we're just going to kind of get this finger tight until i can actually figure out how i want to tighten that how i want to tighten that so now assuming i did this right a bit forward sounds good so far but I gotta tighten this up so we're just gonna get this nice and close and see if I can sneak my nut driver in here yeah there we go no problem ah. there we go nice and tight so assuming I did this right ah come on all right, quick out, quick out of the mirror. I figured out what it was right after I cut the video. Uh, you don't want to put the bell as close as you can up the part here. When you extend, when the arm's extended, you want it to just barely touch it by the force when this thing springs around. So, so now that it's farther away and this thing is just barely ringing it, nice and loud, exactly the way we want it. 
Might even play around with this a bit more as time goes on. So, mystery solved. That's how you mount the bell. I'll just kind of see if I can get a good picture there. Now, we're going to go ahead and just get this reassembled. Put this back in. And make sure to reinstall your cotter pins. All right, cotter pins are, at least two of them are reassembled. I'm sure I have a third one around here somewhere that I'm just forgetting to put in. All right. Well, sorry for the absolute dumpster fire that was this reassembly. I'm, a bit, I'm obviously very tired right now and I should have waited, but oh well, lesson learned. Uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next part.